Well, thank you, Tim, and uh, I'm anxious to hear lessons two and three, too, so I, I really, uh, sorry to interrupt uh, what was already underway, and I appreciate the chance to be with you today, and I'm looking forward very much to working with you and your organization on issues that are of critical importance to the future of this country, and I want to congratulate uh, Bob Goodlad, who I served with in the House of Representatives for his leadership on high-tech issues for a long period of time and for working with the Internet Caucus uh, here in the Congress. Uh, Pat Leahy, Rick Boucher, also uh, people who've been involved with this for a long period of time. And so I appreciate their leadership and welcome the opportunity to work with them uh, on issues that we think are, uh, are very important to uh, the future of this country and I know are important to the people in this room. And I want to welcome you all to Washington. Um, <clears throat> we have a, some people like to call it Disneyland East, but um, any given day out here, uh, you know, there's, uh, lots of different things going on and I know Bob got tied up with votes earlier we've had you know votes throughout the day as well and and uh, legislation that we're working on in the Senate this week so it, uh, it's a little bit unpredictable but um, I appreciate your uh, patience with that and and your willingness to hang out with members of Congress with our approval ratings down in the single digits you know it takes an act of courage to come and, and, and associate with us and John McCain always says when you get down into the single digits you're pretty much talking about paid staff and blood relatives but <laughs> But I do think that uh, there are, uh, as we all know, uh, lots, of, uh, lots of challenges, and I guess our job is to make sure that we're doing good things in terms of policies that will promote and expand and grow the economy. Uh, telecommunications and the Internet have been an incredible driver of economic growth in this country and, and are doing some wonderful things. And I would like to think I bring somewhat of a unique perspective to this because I come from the state of South Dakota where we have uh, a whole lot of uh, square miles and not many people. And um, so we are kind of what, when people, when you hear people talk about the digital divide, in many respects, South Dakota is sort of the frontier of the digital divide. And I've seen the, the remarkable things that technology can do in rural areas like South Dakota. And I can, I've also seen uh, the absence of it and uh, the impact that that can have. And as Tim mentioned, uh, when I was a member of the House of Representatives, uh, where I served for three terms, I got involved in the issue of telemedicine, and I've stayed involved with that throughout my time in the Senate. But we're doing some wonderful things through technology to deliver health care services to people in rural areas. And we think that is something that, um, that we ought to be looking at using technology to do. We have an elderly population in South Dakota. We have a, a, a very rural and geographically isolated population. And so uh, delivering uh, health care through technology is something that uh, provides a great service to people in states like mine. When I grew up, I grew up in a small town, about uh, 600 people in the central part of South Dakota. And um, my uh, grandfather came to this country from Norway back in 1906, and he was a, uh, along with my great uncle, and they came through Ellis Island, they came to the immigration officials there. The given name wasn't Thune, it was Yelsvik. It was G-J-E-L-S-V-I-K. And the immigration officials thought that would be difficult to spell and pronounce for the people in this country, and so they asked them to change their name, and they selected the name of the farm where they worked near Bergen, Norway, which was the Thune Farm. But they, uh, they came to uh, South Dakota work on the transcontinental railroads like a lot of people at that time did and then settled down and started to uh, build and raise families and, and start businesses, got into the hardware business, which they did for a number of years. But my dad tells the stories of going through the Great Depression and how rural electrification lit up the areas of the country that didn't have access uh, even to electricity. That at that time was something that was uh, still very uncommon in rural parts of the country. And what a, what a transformational effect that had on, uh, on the country uh, where we lived at that period of time. And I recall as I was growing up in that small town of 600 people that to me the, the world sort of began and end at the city limits of my hometown of Murdo, South Dakota. And I look at now my children and the opportunities they have uh, because of technology to go to the far reaches of the world. And um, now they're a part of the Facebook and the Twitter generation. And uh, there are just so many great things that have been accomplished through the use of technology. But there are also some big challenges that we face as we move forward. And how do we deal uh, with the issues of um, making sure that broadband is accessible in very remote areas of South Dakota, another area that uh, could benefit immensely from the use of high-speed uh, Internet technologies is the Indian reservations in South Dakota. We've got uh, people who live in poverty and um, 
some very uh, just awful economic conditions and those are very isolated, geographically isolated areas in our state. And that, that too is something that when we talk about delivery of uh, high-speed internet broadband services, there are lots of places in South Dakota that just flat don't have access to it yet. And so what are the best incentives to encourage uh, development, investment in those areas of the country to make sure that everybody across the country is, is, uh, is wired up? And, um, and also, I know the purpose of this is to talk about the mobile net in the future and where that goes. And I think that, too, is, uh, is uh, something that uh, as we focus on the future of, of uh, this industry and where it's headed, uh, draw on the lessons from the past, but look with anticipation to the many, hopefully, remarkable developments going forward, bearing in mind at the same time we've got to be conscious of issues like privacy and how do we continue to use uh, advertising online as a great way to, um, to provide free internet services, but also to make sure that people's uh, personal privacy is protected. Uh, the issue of cybersecurity is something, too, that uh, continues to, to loom out there. And, you know, there are lots of uh, folks who are always trying to hack into our systems in this country. And so we've got uh, lots of issues to, uh, to focus on, and I hope that uh, this conference will um, be meaningful to all of you. As, uh, and, and as we consult with you about the future, the direction, the policies that we put in place that encourage uh, the further development of, um, of technology and telecommunication services in this country, uh, we look forward to working with you and, um, and answering some of those hard questions. But we think that uh, the sky's the limit in this country. It's difficult to, to predict the future. Um, <laughs> Yogi Berra once said, predictions are difficult, especially about the future. And, uh, and I think that's uh, certainly something that um, we can all appreciate. But if you look back on just in the short time that I've been around here and where I started from in that little town in South Dakota and how far we have come and the discussions and the conversations that we're having today and the way that we're using the power of technology, um, it's, uh, I think the sky is the limit. So we look forward to working with you. I thank you for the opportunity to stop by and say hi today. And uh, as we, um, as you continue with this conference today, I'm anxious to get a download from you. I want to congratulate you on the work that you do. I know the Internet uh, advisory Committee has played an important role in advising Congress in conducting conferences like this where you do talk about and elevate some of these important issues and, and uh, we certainly uh, welcome the input and the advice that, uh, that you all give us as we try and shape policies that will promote a, a, a stronger, uh, more prosperous American economy and, uh, and hopefully a, a more prosperous world. So thank you all very much. Uh, have a great conference, and I appreciate the chance to stop by today. Thank you.